A horrific crash caught on camera. We're in Bellevue, new video shared with Fox One person dead, five of them with two cars Each day, around 100 people die on American roads. This is the road fatality rate among EU member states, and this is where America stands. When comparing the American to the EU average, it's quite a difference. Road crashes have been normalized in our society, and in 2019, road crashes cost American society $340 billion. But just because so many people drive in America doesn't mean there should be so many crashes. A recent article found that even when adjusted for distance driven, the US road fatality rate remains double the average of other wealthy nations. Several reasons were highlighted like distracted driving and speeding. But the article, like so many others, misses what should have been at the core of discussion years ago. The design of streets. This is your typical American street, a sea of asphalt. And this is an improved version that considers a balance between accessibility, safety, and livability. How should America redesign its streets? In the last decade, total traffic fatalities have risen by 31%, whereas in the EU, they have fallen by 22%. Furthermore, the most basic form of freedom, walking, has never been more dangerous. Pedestrian fatalities have risen a whopping 77% in the last decade. The majority of fatal crashes happen in urban areas, and it's also where you'll find the majority of crashes involving pedestrians and cyclists. The problem is this. American streets are designed as wide and straight stretches of asphalt for miles. These design principles follow those behind highways, which are intended for comfortable, high-speed driving over long distances. However, unlike highways, city streets are full of houses and shops. If a street is a large patch of asphalt, people won't pay as much attention and can and will drive fast despite a speed limit. Whereas if a street has reduced space for cars and has traffic calming measures, drivers will pay more attention and drive slower. So most American streets are designed to allow high-speed driving and don't provide the option to walk or cycle safely, unlike European ones such as those in the Netherlands, which are designed to discourage high-speed driving and provide an option to walk and cycle safely. In 2022, speeding was a contributing factor in 29% of all traffic fatalities. Simply lowering the speed limit or encouraging drivers to share the road isn't going to help because the road design itself should convey the need for slower speeds. This is why countries like the Netherlands have completely redesigned their road network over the last few decades. This is an intersection from the 1970s in Amsterdam. Back then, most streets were a sea of asphalt, like in the US, but they changed it. This is the same street today. They have planted trees, put in a bike lane, and a continuous pavement, and created a one-way access street to limit through traffic in the 30 km per hour residential area. A sustainable road network strikes a balance between accessibility, safety, and livability. Since the 1990s, the Dutch have adopted the concept of sustainable safety, which implies that roads are designed to prevent serious crashes and reduce the severity of those crashes that occur. Creating a forgiving road design reduces the likelihood of serious injury or death in the event of a crash. One of the most important design principles in sustainable safety is a clear hierarchy of roads. I talked more about Dutch road design in one of my previous videos, so I won't go into too much detail. This is a well-designed distributor road. There is a curbside protected bike lane and the road has one lane in each direction separated by a median to prevent head-on crashes. And at bigger intersections, roundabouts are often the preferred option. Now, let's do a comparison. Take a look at this typical small American intersection that has been improved recently with a bike lane and a pedestrian crossing. And this is a small typical Dutch intersection. Notice the difference? 
Both streets have a bike lane, however, in the American one, cyclists are squeezed in between the roadway and parking, while in the Netherlands, they are physically protected. Most importantly though, the Dutch intersection includes traffic islands. Traffic islands play a crucial role in enhancing pedestrian safety at intersections and pedestrian crossings. They allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross the street in two stages, while also making drivers slow down. Moreover, Dutch streets generally have fewer lanes, making crossing for pedestrians much safer. And it's not the number of lanes that determines the capacity of a road. It's the intersection, which is why the number of lanes is kept to a minimum even on large arterial roads and only increases just before reaching an intersection. Large arterial roads may even have speed bumps. However, speed bumps are typically installed on access roads. Access roads are residential streets that make up traffic-calmed residential areas where bicycles and cars can share the road. But this only works if there are adequate traffic calming measures. Most importantly, access roads should be narrow to achieve lower speeds. Through careful road design, the Dutch systematically reduced the possibility of road crashes and have achieved an impressive 80% reduction in road fatalities over the last 50 years. Not only has adopting sustainable safety created one of the safest road networks in the world, but it has also led to the creation of some of the world's most livable urban environments. By decreasing the space for cars and encouraging walking and cycling, accidents are reduced with fewer drivers on the road. By having safe streets, children can travel by bicycle on their own and develop a sense of independence rather than solely relying on their parents to drive them around everywhere. While most American cities consist of low-density suburbia where driving is the go-to option, this doesn't mean that it can create traffic calm roads and provide the opportunity for safe walking and cycling. So, instead of distributor roads being a sea of asphalt, we can narrow the space for cars, create green spaces, bike lanes and pavements, and plant plenty of trees. It's important to note that many more changes can be implemented and redesigns like this offer a quick insight into how streets should generally look. Nobody wants to live next to a highway. Therefore, instead of planning streets only for cars, it's time to redesign them as streets for everybody to stop people from dying and create more accessible and more livable cities. If you are interested more in urbanism, make sure to check out my video about road and street design in the Netherlands and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time.